I'm going to take a little bit of a different direction than, than the debate that's been going on from, from both sides of the aisle. And I don't think when we legislate that compromise is a bad word. I don't think compromise is a bad word. And back in 2012, when this program was eliminated, I was one of the people that voted no to eliminate the program. And I think we really need to understand the population and how this program work. So I, I did a lot of research before I got up here and speak. And I went back to 2012 and looked at the population that was enrolled in this program. Now there are nine different categories that people that qualify for cash assistance. Back in 2012, there were 65,000 plus people in Pennsylvania collecting general assistance. And out of those nine categories, listen to this. Those who were permanently disabled, there were 35,500 people collecting because they were permanently disabled. Now, that's a category we really got to look at. Because the permanently disabled, the qualify for general assistance, had to apply for social security disability, or they would not get that $200. And, and it's hard to get our hands around how much was recovered by the state. And as soon as these people qualified, the federal government would reimburse the state all of the general assistance money that that person collected from the very first check. And because Social Security sometimes takes a long time, it can take six months, a year, possibly two years before you qualify, it's actually kind of hard to get a handle on how much money the state was able to recoup. But I'm sure it was a pretty large portion of the money that they paid out for those 35,500 people. The second largest category was people who were temporarily disabled. And these were people for whatever reason, got hurt on a job or whatever, they were temporarily disabled for a time. And there were 25,500 people collecting under the temporarily disabled category. So out of those 65,000 people, 61,000 people were either permanently disabled or temporarily disabled. Out of the rest of the nine categories, I mean, there weren't actually very many people collecting. The next biggest category were those people who were in drug and alcohol treatment, and that was about 1,500. People who were collecting because they were victims of domestic violence, that was only a little over 100 people that were actually collecting. And there was a category for women who were pregnant, and there was actually not one person in the state of Pennsylvania, a woman who was pregnant, who was actually collecting. And I know we voted on an amendment a while ago. There was not one person collecting because those women qualified for many other things that were not eligible for cash assistance. So I think there's parts of this program. And again, I've always thought this should be a budget issue and negotiated during the budget, not voted on as a bill. But as we get closer to the budget, I mean, I think there are parts of this program that we can look at saving. And the other issue that I wanted to talk about is this issue of accountability and waste, fraud, and abuse. So, so what I did is I actually went to the department and I pulled the guidelines 
and the safety that's involved. Because I, I for one, I don't want to see any waste, fraud, and abuse. Believe me, I don't want to see one dollar wasted where somebody's abusing us or buying drugs or buying alcohol or doing other things. So I just want to go over a couple of the guidelines and the safeties that are in place for people before they actually qualify. Individuals are not eligible for benefits if they are incarcerated or have been sentenced for a felony or a misdemeanor. Individuals are not eligible for cash assistance or are, if they are in violation of the terms of their probation or parole. Individuals are not eligible for cash assistance if they own fines or restitution from a criminal case. And this one, number four, to me really jumps out at me. The department has access to records of the Pennsylvania State Police and the Pennsylvania Board of Pardon and Paroles. Individuals who have failed to appear in criminal court proceedings when issues of summons are disqualified from receiving benefits. If the department determines that a person has an ongoing substance abuse problem that presents a barrier to employment, the individual must participate in a drug or alcohol treatment compliance facility and satisfactorily compete the drug and alcohol treatment. So, I mean, it appears to me that there are pretty good safeguards in place. Can we improve upon them? Maybe. I mean, let's have a discussion about that. I mean, if there's a question about accountability, maybe we can improve on those safeguards. So, my friends, I mean, I, I think there's room that we can compromise here. I really do, because there's parts of this program, I think, that are worthwhile saving. And these are individuals in every one of our district. So I, with that, I, I am not going to vote to completely eliminate the program. I hope that this is part of the budget discussion and that we can find room to compromise on this. So I'm going to be voting no today, but I'm hopeful that we can negotiate and compromise on this. Thank you.